this last week of my free podcast course, I'm going to put the moving and get moving guitar. I'll show you how to gain momentum in your practice. So you can take everything we've learned and experience continued success. Hello, welcome friends. This is episode 191 of the Play Guitar Podcast. I'm Lee. This is the podcast that's determined to make you a better guitar player. No matter if you're just starting out or you've been playing for years, this is the show that will help you become the guitarist that you always wanted to be. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the podcast and check the description for all of the links from the show. Let's say hi to who we got here. Jason's here. Hi, Jason. How are you doing today? Let me fix my headphones a little bit. There, there we go. Jason's here. Jim is here. Hey, Jim, what's going on, man? Uh, Dean's here. Hi, Dean. Hope you're doing great. Charlie. Hey, Charlie. Good to see you. And Michael's here. Hi, Michael. And a bunch of other folks I can see uh, are here who may not be in the chat. Hello to you, too. We're going to have some fun today. We're going to close out Get Moving Guitar today. Uh, we're going to talk about building momentum with everything we've learned in our practices, which is going to be a lot of fun. And also, uh, we're going to try something uh, new today. We're going to have some fun. I've got a couple of different things I'd like to start trying with the uh, with um, the live streams. And today we're going to have kind of a uh, a uh, challenge, uh, gu guitars from the '70s challenge. We're going to go down. I've listed a whole bunch of gu guitar players and soundings. We're going to see who, which is the ones that have affected you the most. Uh, it's head to head, and we're going to do this through the chat. So uh, basically, in each round, I've got a whole whole list of competition here. Let's see. Let's share this real quick. I'll show you what we've got here. Um, so going through a bunch of different of uh, guitar players from the 70s, uh, and we're going to go head to head until we find a winner uh, that uh, is is uh, one that we all can agree on, the quintessential 70s guitar player. Uh, oh, Chris is here. Hey, Chris. Chris says, I can listen in while working today. Awesome. Yay. That's all right. That's all right. I hope everybody's doing good. And um, Chris says, I can listen in while hey. working today. Awesome. Yay. That's all right. That's all right. I hope everybody's doing good. And um, Chris, there it was. I had the YouTube uh, window open there. Let me get rid of that without messing everything up. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started uh, with Get Moving Guitar. This is the, the week six. And we're going to take everything that we've learned in the first five weeks and we're talking about how do we get this to get, uh, you know, use it all to get us moving forward. Uh, I'm going to go to here. Um, okay. So we're going to talk about momentum. What's momentum? It's this, it's the strength or force that allows something to continue to grow stronger or faster as time passes. Uh, I say a lot of stuff that you should be kind of getting this idea from. I, you hear me say, Get Moving Guitar, the title for this. You hear me say, uh, The Guitar Journey, right? Moving through small goals, stop getting stuck, getting on the right path, start moving forward. I, a, a lot of the, the uh, phrases that I use intentionally are, uh, we talk about movement. We're not gonna be stuck. And, and I, there's a lot more, those are just what came to mind. Uh, when I was putting this together, but the, I say these things over and over again to let you know that there's another way to approach practicing. I like to figure things out. It's one of my favorite things to do. I, 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 I like to understand how something works. Um, but I found out early on, especially in college when I was going for jazz guitar, where I was going into a style of music that I really didn't play. You know, it, it was it was an opportunity. I took it, uh, but it wasn't like my favorite style of music. I wasn't wanting to be a jazz guitar player, but I found out just knowing how something works is nowhere near enough to really be good at it, to really move forward and to see results. You need momentum, right? And to build momentum, you need to be on the right path and you also need to be inspired to keep moving forward. It's kind of like being in the zone, Right. Um, there's a lot of times I'm in the zone. A lot of times I'm not in the zone. I, I'm, uh, hey, Coke's here. Hi, Coke. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. How are you doing today? Um, 
Okay, so in the zone, right? The zones where um, you're not dis being distracted, you're confident that you're working on the right things, um, you're experiencing good results, and you know that you're going to continue to experience more and more results as you move on. Just learning some songs and just buying a lot of gear is not going to get you there. And obviously, if you know, we've listened to all of these one, two, three, four, five. If you're here at part six, you're you're one of the ones that want to change the way your history on the guitar is going to end up. And we all know practicing is the way you get better, right? Having a well planned practice routine that's built on a strong foundation. That's the, you, know, you can practice all the time, but if you're not, um, if you're practicing things that are ahead of where you are, uh, you're going to have hard hard time. And so you need to be aimed right where you want to go and avoiding anything else that stands in your way. And you're going to start to experience momentum. And that's really exciting, uh, especially for the first time in guitar. It's people who are lost, who are working at one thing, and they start to see, hey, okay, I see how this is going. We're getting some momentum there. Um, so what did we do? We did week one, we did the setup. We're setting up our room uh, or our corner or whatever that you have. Uh, week two was setting up the routine. Week three, dealing with rhythm guitar. Week four is dealing with lead guitar. Week five, we talked about songs, getting your set list of songs together. I hope you guys have got some idea of a set list of songs. Maybe not exactly how I uh, presented it to you, but at least some sort of grouping of songs um, so you can keep track of these things and you don't lose them. Uh, th that's been part of our focus, but basically tells you when you think of all five of these things, how we're going to think as we move forward. So hopefully you've got your head right. You know how to approach practicing. You understand what it takes to succeed. And now we're going to put this stuff in motion. And we're going to figure out how can we stick with this long enough to see some big results. And here we go. The next three sections. Number one is start where you are. We normally are always looking forward. We wanted to do the things we can't do yet. And we get a little upset that it's such a struggle to be able to do those things. Uh, but to start gaining momentum, we have to find the things that have been holding us back. Deal with them first, as fast as you can. Right? We have to free ourselves up start moving forward. And so you've always, no matter where you, you set out to go somewhere, you've always got a first step and you've had countless first steps in your life. You've run headfirst into learning something new and it might be, you know, uh, tapping or something, you know, speed playing or something fun that you would love to do. And then it doesn't end so well. You end in frustration uh, and you think you might've been wasting your time. We're going to get start started fresh we're going to look back a little bit. Um, if you're at, uh, you know, wherever you are, if you have a good idea of where your current level on the guitar is, uh, you have some perspective. You can see where you've been, right? You know what skills that you've developed to get where you are, but you're going to be honest with yourself. You also know what you've skipped or paid minimal attention to. What are the things that you know you should probably be doing, but they aren't so exciting? It could be timing. It could be rhythm. It could be bar chords, theory. It's different for everyone. And I'm as I'm looking through the, uh, through the chat and see all the different names here, uh, and I know a lot about most of your guitar playing, I can pick one of those things that maybe, you know, for each of you that, that it's, could spend a little bit of time on, right? As I started this topic, and it's about filling in the cracks, really, um, I know something popped into your thoughts, right? Yeah, I could really stand to work on that. How we're going to start is right there, from the front of your thoughts. What popped in your mind? How easy it would be to just put that aside, like we always do. Get back to the short-term fun things, but we're not going to do that. I don't want that for you anymore. I, I I, I can't tell you how many different students I've had. I have two or three on the mind on my mind right now who, who've been stuck 
basically not moving forward at all for like 20, 30, or 40 years. It's really, it happens all the time. There's a lot of people out there who've just, they pick up the guitar, they really want, they, they put the effort in, but they're not seeing any results. Um, it's not fun. Uh, you could be stuck right now, have no idea that you are, because you're distracted by, oh, I'm going to work on this next, work on this next. We're going to get motivated, we're going to fight back, we're going to work on the skills that may not be the most exciting at the time, but they are something to get excited about. These are the skills that you need to realize that when you have them solid, you're going to be going farther than you've ever thought that you could go. So we're going to have to realize that what, once we realize that uh, when you fill in the cracks, it's not just doing the same old thing. We're going to be doing something different. This is going to be something new. This is a new chapter for you. It, um, it's, it's different, Right. Don't just pick up the guitar in the same way you always do. We're going to change it up. Take week one where we went through all the, about your practice space and about how you, I like this here. This is something that I did that was new. Let me, let me I'll switch my camera here. See if I can get a good, good shot of this. I put, there's my lights right there, my two monitors. And my wife got me this, this, uh, I don't know if it's kind of like a print painting. It's a little of both of Stevie right there. And when I see that, I feel like playing guitar. So that's something that, that I did uh, recently to uh, know that I'm doing things differently now. It's, it's inspiring to me. Uh, it's one thing that I think uh, when I see that, I see him playing guitar and I'm like, yeah, that's it right there. That's what I want to do. Um, so I'm not going to, I'm going to change things up or take week one to heart and make it obvious that you're starting fresh. This is not the same you that never sees any results. This is a turning point for guitar playing. Um, and this week is, we've been um, using the Spark Amp. Uh, it's, it's not been the centerpiece of this, but it's, but I've been showing how I've been using it in my practicing and all the features that I've been finding uh, that could help out. And the, the, the number one thing that you could do right now that if you would it, that would change your practicing for the, the the best is to start video recording part of your practice on a daily basis okay um, that was for me that was always difficult I found an audio I had a little uh, I still have it a little zoom. I think it was an H1 little handheld recorder, and I would use that. Um, but videoing, you know, with the webcams and everything, I'm using them for other things. It was always just a pain. Uh, but now I've been, you know, let me get this camera back over here again. Let me see here. So now I've been using the little video camera icon right there. Okay. Um, and you can add the music in, whatever you're jamming on, right from the, uh, let me go back, right from the positive, the uh, Spark app and saves it to the gallery of your phone. And so whenever I come up with an idea, boom, actually I did it the other day, I lost, I don't know if I didn't save it or what it was, but I had a really good idea. I'm going to have to redo that one again. Um, Damon says... When I need motiv motivation, I just listen to Joe Satriani. That that works good. Let's say hi to some other some more folks um, as we came in. Let's see. Dean says, "Like the changing lights." Yeah, that actually I've been using that one for a while. I just had it stuck on one um, on one color, and I just was running late, so I just turned it on, sat down real quick. Uh, Coke says, "Surgery seven days ago is pretty sore left hand." Oh, that's right, that's right. But here, thinking musically today. And, you know, maintaining momentum. Good. I hope I hope everything um, went well. Sounds like it it did. And um, I hope that uh, you're able to get back to it again soon. It's good to see you, man. Very good to see you. Uh, Richard says, hey, Lee, thanks for changing up to 11. Works with my lunch break. Good. <laughs> That's good. Good to see you, Richard. How are you doing today? That's wonderful. David's here. Hi, David. Mark is here. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? Uh, and okay. 
All right, so videoing yourself, practicing, you know, seeing what you do good, seeing what needs some work. It's really, really, really important. That's an easy thing that we can do to start building momentum. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. It's uh, I'm gonna go into get focused in a second. I want to talk about this a little bit more. Now, it's uncomfortable watching yourself. I don't like watching myself play <laughs> at all. I don't. Um, I will usually generally just focus in on the guitar as much as I can. Um, but when you get comfortable with using this, and it becomes a reality check, I start to rely on it. Most, you know, this is new, the Spark stuff, but that Zoom recorder I have, I'd rely on it. You know, I'd, I can't remember everything that I did. And I had some good stuff, and then I'd listen back to it and say, say, ooh, that may not have been as good as I thought it was, right? Uh, but being able to check things before you perform or before you play for someone else or, or before you move on to something else, even if you're not performing for anyone, you know, uh, this gives you the confidence that you have your music together before you move on and you have a, a record of your progress. Very motivational. Let's talk about getting focused. Okay. First step we're going to do is set some goals. I talk about this a lot, how important goal setting is, but small goals are much easier to achieve and they keep you on a path. And as you hit small goals over time, that's when things speed up. That's when you start to build momentum. Um, I have a sheet in the downloads section just for today. I, didn't, I don't have it loaded up right now, uh, but it's a goal setting sheet and, uh, and a few other things on that sheet right there. It's in the week six for the downloads. It's very, and you can just you can print out a bunch of them. Uh, you don't have to have just one goal. A couple of, it starts with big goals and then top down with all the smaller goals. How we find these small goals, that's by setting the big ones and researching what it's going to take. Uh, in the podcast today, in the audio podcast, the example that I just kind of came off with right off the bat was, what if I wanted to be like a flamenco guitarist, right? If I wanted to be a great flamenco, if that was my thing, um, what would I do? Well, first off, I look into what it would take, look into flamenco guitar, find out what the basic skills are that I need to succeed. I listen to different players and players of different levels too. Uh, and I discover, well, what's what's different between like, like a beginner flamenco player and someone's been playing for a while and then, you know, an advanced player. I learned what the songs would be. What are the first songs that you typically would play? I don't know as a flamenco player, but but what would those first songs be? And then I tried to learn, well, what are the basic techniques there? And I list all this down in my goal sheet uh, from, you know, beginning to end. What is the first skill? What's the second skill? What's the third skill? And, and I go into intermediate songs. I go into advanced songs. And I would this would be a skill map. I put everything into order. I need to do this, then this, then this. It sounds simple. But unfortunately, that's most guitar players... They don't work that way. They go straight to the next, you know, they jump five skills that they need and go for the, the flashy stuff, you know. And, you know, if you have a skill map and you put everything in order, you chop it up into small wins, then momentum starts to happen. Uh, at that point, once I would have researched all that stuff, I get consistent. I make sure to have a regular time where I learned about what my new focus is each week. And I'd set up my practice using all the stuff that we do. Technique, chords, scales, rhythms, reading or writing, songs, and improvisation. I touch on all of those things where appropriate. If I'm just starting out, improv is not going to be part of what I'm doing. I'm just learning the basics right now. Um, but, you know, as I move on, maybe just technique and chords may be what I'm starting with. Throw in the little scales, but at, at some point, I would add in as I went along, but only work on those skills that are appropriate. Um, and then, all the while, I would remove myself from distraction. I make sure I didn't put myself in a position where I was experimenting all the time with different styles of music until this goal was accomplished, this big goal. Uh, and so, in the Spark, every song you jam along, 
to um, has the bookmark icon, right? Uh, when you click this icon, the current song gets loaded into your saved songs group. Uh, there's this, let's see here, let's see if I can find one here. Okay, so we've got uh, hamburger icon, and let's see here, let me make sure I can see, so I know what you can see. Uh, save songs, right down here, that's right under my name, right there, okay, and I have a few in there. Uh, it, it's, um, you click on the song that you bookmarked, here is, this is um, Alan Hines, Worn But Not Tattered, this is a song that I was wanting to play for a long time. I need to stop that. I don't want to hear that. There we go. Um, there it is. All I did was I saw that song in YouTube. It was a song that I was wanting to learn for a long time. I just hit that little bookmark and there it is when I sit down and practice. I've got it right up there. It's, it's super easy. Uh, you can do a lot of research with this. You can use YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Music. They will all go there. When you find the songs that are in your current focus for where you are along the way in your skill map, um, you can include those in your practice depending on how far far along you are. Also, the Tone Cloud works good too. If you're researching gear, if part of it is you're learning a certain new style of music and you want to uh, learn more about how to get the right tones for that, you can do the same thing. Bookmark, you know, that has a favorite, I think is what they call it for the tones. Uh, you can learn from them and then change them a little bit to suit your playing. Part three, and this is the most important part, is we're going to start demanding achievement. We're going, to be, we're going to do some things until they're done at the smallest level. Uh, when you're using a foundational approach, which is what we've been doing, starting with a strong foundation and then moving forward, um, and then having your path mapped out from you from this from what I've been talking about, it's it's easy to get overwhelmed by everything it's going to take for you to succeed. You might feel like you should be you should be good now, right? You might you should be there, and it should be easier to do. When you pick this, right? When you decided that you're going to play this thing, you didn't pick something that was user friendly. This is one of the most worthwhile things that, that I've done, learning how to play guitar. It's a very worthwhile thing to do, but it takes a while to master this, and it's easy to lose interest, and it's easy to give up. But the great thing about playing music is you have something valuable to say, even if you're just starting out. And I'm giving an example that every step of my journey with a guitar was important, and it helped build me as a guitar player, and getting it, I got in the habit of recognizing my wins and how important they were, and that's where I kind of dropped the ball. In this next section, we're going to talk about celebrating these small goals. Okay, so you hear about that a lot. You should celebrate the small things. I, you hear that all the time. I frequently heard that it's important. I never believed it. When I achieved any sort of a goal, I never stopped and celebrated. Because in my mind, I did it, right? I thought that that was good enough. That was my achievement. That was my celebration. That, that I can do this now. It's payment for me. And man, have I, you know, that for decades, <laughs> I missed the mark. Because when I would finally learn how to do something well, I would just get relief that the pressure was off. And that's it. It was just uh, frustration as I was trying to learn something, relief that I could finally do it, and then I'd put more pressure on myself to learn whatever the next thing I wanted to do was. It, really, it was only that I was done being hard on myself. Uh from learning the first thing, and then I moved on to the next thing. Everything started to blend together. It was just one long string of things that I was pressuring myself to learn. I wasn't getting used 
to achieving anything. I was just keeping more pressure on all the time and say, I'll get good. I'm going to get good. I wasn't using what you hear me all the time, which is the, I, the power of repetition. Repetition is how we're going to get better, how we're going to build momentum. There was no momentum for me. There was no sense of movement. It was just pressure, a little bit of relief, and then back to the pressure again. So getting in the habit of setting small goals and celebrating every single one of them builds momentum. It keeps you on the path and you stay motivated. It also builds confidence that you're knocking these goals down, it, it, no matter how small they are. So you got this information. You, you understand how uh, to structure your journey on the guitar. We're going to set up the positive reinforcement part of it. This is a step that's going to glue all of it together. This is not something to just blow off. How are you going to reward yourself for each step of the way? What's it going to be? What are you going to do to help yourself learn guitar? And honestly, uh, I need a, we all need all the help we can get. So what do you think? When I say celebrate, when I say reward yourself, what, what's the first thing that you thought of? I'm going to let, let, uh, let everyone chime in here. What do you think? How would you celebrate a small win for you? For me, the first thing that pops up is gear, right? And, you know, I'm going to reward myself. I'm going to buy some more gear. Well, that's okay. That's what you're able to do. Um, but you don't have to just buy things to reward yourself. Uh, there's all kinds of different rewards. I've tried doing all of these different things. And purchase work, okay, good. But but just as well as some other things I've tried. Uh, for me, where time is an issue, uh, I give myself some time off. Uh, sometimes um, I'm playing so much and I really want to, uh, you know, work on some tones, you know, explore uh, some different gear that I have. I've been loving, you know, looking at the different things that are in the, the spark, you know, and with that new update too. So whatever it is for you, plan these things out ahead of time and don't blow it off like I did for a long, long, long time. In fact, in the, the, uh, in the download I have for this week off Every single goal, the big goal, and then all of the small ones, there is a place for how are you going to celebrate each of those goals. I'm doing a lot of this. Now, everything we've been talking is for guitar, but for me, I'm building this, you know, the academy and building, you know, the, the podcast and doing all of those things, which is a, has been a very big challenge for me. And I've had some small wins. I'm moving forward you know, but I wasn't celebrating. So I've done the same thing, but in my path of moving everything forward as far as that end of it as well. And it's very healthy. Uh, I've changed a lot of stuff. And then we talked about changing uh, how you practice and all those things. I've changed. I'm, I was up this morning at five o'clock working on this stuff. So even with all the other things I do, um, if I can get to bed early, wake up early, uh, I get content out. I am currently trying to get as far ahead on podcasts as I can, and I am doing great on that. So these things are working for me, not just for guitar, but in other things too. Uh, okay, so here's the end of this. This is where do you go from here? Uh, and thanks for hanging out with me through all of these different weeks. Don't forget about the promo code uh, for... Uh, Positive Grid, it's $10 off uh, a new Spark. It's the promo card code is PlayGuitar10. Uh, you just go to PositiveGrid.com and where you would purchase a Spark amp, just put that in as a coupon code and uh, you'll get $10 off right there. Okay, so that's the end of uh, the audio podcast, what we've done on the audio podcast. Uh, I'm going to spend some time in the chat right now and then we're going to go through, we're going to have our little competition, our guitars from the 70s. Uh, I'm very curious uh, to see uh, which, and this was tough too, because a lot of the guitars, some of them 
you know, were pretty relevant through the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and even up to now, you know. So this is, is going to be fun to do. But first, we're going to go into the chat a little bit. Uh, let's see here. David says, I always think I'm making no progress, and I go back and look at my early video recording and know that it has been a big improvement. That's what I'm talking about. That's the, that's the good stuff, especially in the coaching you know, when we have those videos every week, it's so easy to see your progress as you go there. Coke says, great feeling, isn't it? It sure is. It sure is. <laughs> David says, reward is buy new gear. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's the easy, the easy way to go, right? Jason says, my latest pedal splurge, retail therapy. That's right. That's good stuff. Good stuff. Um, Coast going to play out live as a reward for all the hard work I put in at home. That's awesome. That's a great reward. And after after the healing process. That's right. Uh, Jason says, these six weeks have been an amazing inspiration for me. I hope they were for others. The podcast brought me back to the guitar full force. Awesome. That's great, Jason. I, I'm really happy about that. The um, the I'm actually going to... Now, this was uh, put together with a meeting between Positive Grid and myself. This is, I came up with the idea, but they thought it was great, and we, we, and we, we went forward. But this has really turned out good. Um, I'm going to have this as kind of as like a, a featured um, giveaway for new people that come in. But I'm also going to be putting these in the Academy and on their own uh, course page as well. So this is something that you can – these six – these six um, weeks are something that you can always come back to. They will be available for you uh, whenever you're ready. Or if you're kind of, uh, for me, if I was losing track, if I was kind of veering off a different way, this would be good to kind of just go through these. And I think I'm going to record videos for them too, just specifically for, for each week. Uh, Charles says, how long does a promo code last? It lasts to the 31st. Uh, that is Tuesday. So we have this the rest of this week till the 31st and then it will be it will be on. And um, on these Wednesdays I'm going to try some different things. Uh, I'd like to add a little bit more fun to these. So uh, we're going to we're going to uh, we're going to have our little competition right now. And um, got some other things too. Some um, Kahoot and some other things I'd like to try out uh, here. Charlie says, still working on the basics here. Reinforces how you need to lock those in. Thanks. So you're welcome, man. That, this, is, this is good stuff. This is good stuff. It's kind of, um, I've, I've kind of gone back over the past three years and kind of picked out the parts that would will help someone. I, I, I put myself in the shoes of someone who is completely frustrated with the guitar and what is all the best advice that I can put all into one and and hit each of the each of the um, things that you need to hit to get your practicing back together? So it's a motivational get to practicing, but it's also to point you in the right direction of practicing and to tell you what are the pitfalls falls that are ahead of you as you're going. So this has been fun. I had a, I had a lot of a lot of fun doing it. Um, okay, so let's see here. Let's see what we got here. See if I can get. All right, so let the competition begin. We're going to start here. That we got Jeff Beck, Larry Carlton, Frank Zappa, Gary Moore, Tony I Iommi, John McLaughlin, Richie Blackmore, Ted Nugent, Dwayne Allman, Ace, Steve Howe, Peter Green, Eric Clapton, Jerry Garcia, Pete Townsend, Gary Rossington, Jimmy Page, Steve Morse. Peter Frampton, Joe Perry, Carlos Santana, Robert Fripp, Joe Walsh, Tom Schultz, David Gilmore, Jeff Baxter, Rory, Johnny, Brian, Mike, Billy, and Neil. Now, some of these, like I said before, um, started in the '60s, and but but these are ones that still has some really really good stuff going on in the '70s right there. So, how we're gonna do this? Um. Let's see what we're going to do. This is all going to be in the chat. Okay, so we're going to start off with round one. And this is between Jeff Beck and Larry Carlton. 
Jeff Beck was started in the Yardbirds, right? And then went on then to with uh, Rod Stewart uh, in, in the Jeff Beck group, right? And they had a bunch of really like some Led Zeppelin st- sounding stuff. And then quickly went out on his own and has been there ever since. Some really cool, cool instrumental music. Um, and then Larry Carlton. Larry Carlton with a lot of really cool instrumental music. And he, in the 70s, uh, Jeff Beck started in the 60s, but the, the, his instrumental stuff in the 70s was, was amazing. But then Larry Carlton started off as a um, session guy in L.A., so you'd hear him in a lot of different TV show themes and all those kind of things. And then then started doing work with like Steely Dan and all of those kind of things. Um, and then ended up on his own doing instrumental guitar music his was jeff beck is more kind of rock and blues based larry carlton was rock and more jazz based too so uh who we got here jeff beck or larry carlton beck or carlton let's just see if um we get anybody uh chiming in on there i love jeff beck i love listening if you if you ever get a chance to um to watch the uh what is this is it the uh, let's see here. Let's see here. It was the Ronnie Scotts, right? If you ever get a chance to to watch the concert, the live at Ronnie Scotts with Tal on bass, it's awesome. It was awesome. Okay, so we've got. Let's see here. We got Beck, 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 and Beck. Okay, so we're gonna. Um, Give it a second here, but it's looking like we got Jeff Beck there. I'm going to, let's see here. Yeah. Okay. So we're, we'll go with um, Beck here. We'll give him a, give him a one. All right. We're on there. So now round two, we've got Frank Zappa and Gary Moore. Okay. Okay, Michael came in with Beck too. So okay, good. I didn't. I, <laughs> I jumped the gun a little bit there. Chris says I've watched the Ronnie Scott stuff. It's a great watch. It really is. It's awesome. I really highly recommend that. And Dean went with Gary. Dean's got Gary Moore over Frank Zappa now. So Frank Zappa, different style of music. You know, very very experimental style of music. He's a guitar player. He was he was a lot of fun. Um, not like the straight ahead, straight ahead um, guitar like Gary Moore uh, with some s- stuff. G- Dean says Gary Moore. Jason says this is a hard one. Moore. Let's see here. David's got Zappa. Frank Zappa there. Jim's going for Gary Moore. Let's see here. Gary Moore. What we got here? We got. Um, Gosh, he he was he died in 2011. I thought it was earlier than that. There, um, but you've got a bunch of different stuff. I had a uh, Gary still got the blues is the is the big one, but he had a lot of different things. He uses Boss pedals too, uh, which I always thought was cool. So let's see, we got um, we got more, more one Zappa, more more. Um, and then Chris says, I think that's the one with people get ready with Josh Stone. Yeah, that was pretty cool too. The Ronnie Scott's gig too, it was. Uh, okay, so we're going to go. I'm going to wait for a second, but I'm pretty sure we're going with more for this one. Um, I can always go back and change it if a whole bunch of Zappas come in here. Uh, Chris went with Gary Moore too. Okay. All right, so we've got Jeff Beck, Gary Moore in, in the uh, second round. Um, and Coke went in with more, too. Okay, how about, let's let's start on the next one. We've got Tony Iommi, Black Sabbath, right, and John McLaughlin. John McLaughlin, I, I'm more familiar, uh, I'm more familiar with his, with the, um, The later things. 
Let's see here. I'm, gonna, I'm pulling up some. There's also a singer called John McLaughlin, who's a younger singer right, right now. But here is, well, let's see here. Yeah, McLaughlin, I think he played, let's see. One second here, just trying to get some, um, some of the other things. I know him from the later stuff. He did the Mahavishnu Orchestra, um, and Miles Davis was where he came in first, but kind of did some like really serious fusion stuff. I, I know him more for like um, his 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 solo stuff too. Uh, in the seventies, he did a lot of stuff with different people. Carlos Santana uh, did some Coltrane recordings, um, Trio of Doom with Jocko, which would have been cool too. But yeah, not not anywhere near as famous as. Uh, as Tony Iommi. So we got Iommi, uh, Iommi, Iommi for three right there. Uh, so let's see. We'll wait just a second. Uh, the next one's going to be interesting. <laughs> All right. We'll go ahead and give this one to uh, Tony Iommi there. So we'll give him one. Again. Oh wait! So we've got Dean. It's got McLaughlin and Mike. So we got one, two, two McLaughlins and one, two, three Iomi. So I'll, I'll give it a second. I'll give it a second. We got some more coming in in just a minute there. So, um, yeah, a lot of great guitar players came from Miles Davis's bands. So you got uh, Robin Ford. Just a lot of cool, a lot of cool stuff. The later and um, later on, Miles Davis's band in the '70s that was was doing some really, <laughs> really crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, so so far we've got Iomi, 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 three, and then McLaughlin for two. Just give it a second. Oh, we got another Iomi. So we got four. So he's he's taken off here. Let me give me a little bottle of water here, and then oh, that was terrible on the microphone. Okay, I'm gonna count down five, four, three, two, one. So looks like one. I only took this one. Okay. Um, but I'll go back and change it if more come in. Okay, so the next one we have, we've got Richie Blackmore, Ted Nugent. <laughs> this is this will be a good one too. Alright, so Richie Blackmore. Fantastic. Uh, what's that? Hush. One of my favorite uh, Deep Purple. Really cool. Like a blues rock thing. Um, Richie Blackmore also was in what, Rainbow. Pretty sure. With uh, various singers in Rainbow. I saw him in Philly uh, when I was growing up. It was pretty cool. And I've seen Ted Nugent a bunch too. Uh, I've seen him once in Atlanta. Opening up for ZZ Top, and I still I can still hear it. <laughs> it's, and what was funny? It was so loud for the opening band when ZZ Top came on. Um, they were there. It was you know dropped by half, and it was it took a while to get your ears adjusted to to listening to that. So, so we've got Blackmore, Blackmore, Black Blackmore, Blackmore. Okay, so uh, Ted is not pulling pulling it. So far, okay. So we got four. Let's see how, how many are we get typically getting in here. Let's do the um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we've got a few coming in. I'm gonna give it to Blackmore. Everyone's giving it to Blackmore. We got um, Jim and David. 
Michael and Dean and Jason. So uh, we'll go ahead and give that. Like I said, I can adjust these if we get more that come in. All right, so now we're at Dwayne and Ace. This one, I, I, I'm pretty sure I know. I, although I like both of them. I like both of them. Ace was, uh, knew about Ace Freely way before I knew about Dwayne Allman myself. Uh, as far as influential guitar players, for me, Dwayne Allman would probably take the cake a little bit more. But as far as... Um, Someone I listened to a lot. I listened to a lot of Kiss in the 70s. So, so uh, Ace is an interesting guy. Very interesting guy. So I'm seeing the Almonds coming in here. Dwayne. Uh, Dwayne up from uh, Dean and Jim and Michael. David. All right. And I'm a KISS fan, and I think he's great, but he's he definitely not as influential as Dwayne Allman. So we got one, two, three, four. Let's see here. Who else we got? Jim, David, Michael, Dean. Okay, I'll wait just a few minutes for, for one more, but it's looking like it's going towards Dwayne Allman. I'm thinking probably that's... How we're gonna go. All right, let's see here. Steve Howe and Peter Green. This one's off the, you know, this this is this is um this one's difficult for me because they're both kind of at that same they weren't the the guitar players that like completely influenced me, you know, but I really like both of them. You know, really do like both of them. Uh, Steve Howe is fantastic. Just everything he plays. Still, uh, I think, what did he do? That last thing, I can't remember. Um, Peter Green is fantastic too. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see here. Th this one's difficult for me. Uh, does anyone have a... Um, influence anyway and this is this is new to me too so this is we've got let's see what we have um one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen four we've got a lot of these um i think next time i may do less uh less choices we'll see so we got peter green peter green peter green oh okay so we're we're having a consensus on that that's cool Peter Green. All right. We got a how. Awesome. I like both of them. I really do. So we're doing one, two, three, four, five to one at this moment. Let's go. Let's go with green tentatively. But um, I will go back and change it if. If uh, more hows come in, yeah, maybe Chris is right. Maybe round one for this week. The thinking time for round two, just an idea. Yeah, we could do. And actually, we could um, we could just let's see. We have about ten minutes left. Let's consider this the first half. Let's do one more from this from this line. Uh, let's do the, the, I wanted to get to this one, Clapton and Garcia. We'll do this one, and then we'll um, figure out, just do this bracket. We'll do winners from the ones that we've just uh, done. I think that would be, that would be fun. So let's, let's do this one here, uh, and then we'll move on to round two, just with the guitar players that we've said, uh, to cut this down a little bit. Um, we got a Clapton in. This is a tough, this, very different guitar players, very, but equally as famous i would think very different so we have um so we have dean is in with clapton michael's got clapton jim's going for clapton we'll give it a few minutes more i've seen both guitar players both were really 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 good um we got uh, chris is for clapton 
So wait just a few minutes more. Um, Jason's got Garcia. Awesome. David's got Garcia. Cool. Cool. I would. I thought this was going to be a very interesting one too. Um, I like both of them for different reasons. I'm not. I'm not like a deadhead uh, where I just listen to everything. But sometimes I've heard some things and actually saw them. You know what was really interesting for me is at veterans. No, at JFK in Philadelphia, where they had Live Aid, the 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 you know, this side of the ponds Live Aid, um, was a. They would have the Army Navy games there. It was a huge state football stadium, American football stadium, and it was um, every time I'd see, I saw Pink Floyd there, and it was like really crowded to get in. And it was hard to get anywhere, and seeing a bunch of bands there. Then I went to see Grateful Dead there one time, and I was like, I I really like to get up this. I want to see what he's doing on. You know, we were so far back. I, I really want to see uh, what he's playing on guitar, coming from a different kind of perspective and we walked to the front of the state there was thousands, tens of thousands i don't know how many thousands of people there and in no other concert could you do this but everyone was just having a good time if you know what i mean and and, and absorbed and just enjoying the music and we just walked right up to the front of the stage and i could just sit there and, and watch and that blew my mind no other concert could you do that you could get so far and then you were stopped but just walked right up front. It's amazing. It was amazing. Um, so let's see here. We've got one, two, three, four, four Claptons and two Garcias. I'm going to go ahead and give that to Clapton uh, in the interest of time. But if we get some more in, I, I will definitely um, go back. So now what we're going to do is we'll get to go through these round two and semi <laughs> semifinals. Uh, so let's see. We got Jeff Beck and Gary Moore. Now I know which one I would would go for. Both of them have been influential for me. Uh, both of them, but one of them to me stands out a little bit more. Who we got for Jeff Beck and Gary Moore? This will be fun. This will be interesting to see. Okay, so we've got um, we got a Beck. Jason said good times. Yeah, really good times. There was a lot of good times being had that night. I'll tell you. Okay, so let's see here. We're going into. So, so, we have, so we've got um, Dean says Beck. Uh, Jim says more. So we're 50 50. Dino's here. Hey, Dino. Dino says Beck. So, um, and so we're. Uh, Two and one. And so now we've got, okay. And then Michael says Beck. So we're three to one. Chris says more. So three to two. This is interesting. David Reed says Beck. And Dina says hello. <laughs> hey, man. So we've got one, two, three, four, four Becks and two Moors, we'll give it a, a a little bit more time. Oh, we got another more. All right, so we have four and three. All right, one, two, three, four and three. We'll give it a few more seconds there. Right now, we got Jeff Beck one ahead. It's a little bit closer. Okay, just a few seconds more. I'm going to I'm going to give it to Beck in the interest of time. Um, I'm double check one, two, three, four, and then uh, one, two, three. Yeah, I'll give it to Beck in the interest of time. I will go back if we get more in for that. Uh, okay, so Tony Iommi and Richie Blackmore. That these are two very. <laughs> Dino says Beck gets extra points for no pick. Yeah, and the baby powder, too. <sighs> okay, so we got Iomi and Blackmore. Two very, um, style-wise, of their lead guitar playing, not the same. But, kind of in that same genre of music, you know? Kind of in that kind of darker, early 
what they called metal back then. Don't know. We don't, we don't call that metal anymore. Uh, but that, that kind of dry, almost with like a fuzz and, Richie Blackmore would do more of a classical style. Iomi was, you know, straight rock and, you know, that stuff. So let's see what we've got so far. Jason's in. Jason's got Iomi. Let's see here. Chris has got Iomi. Dino's going Blackmore. David's got Iomi. And Dean's got Iomi. So, so, so far, Tony Iomi's taking it. We got one Blackmore there. Um... So I'm going to give that one to Iomi, uh, but we may get some more in. Oh, we got two Blackmores. Jim came in. Jim came in with Blackmore, too. So we've got two Blackmores and one, two, three, four Iomis. Um, we'll just give it another second or two. That probably is what we're going to get in there. So we're gonna, we'll go ahead and... Give that one, <clears throat> give that one to Iomi for the moment. Dwayne Allman and Peter Green. I'm not gonna say anything. This was this was. Uh, I'm uh, I'm just gonna let this one go. Let's see what what comes in. Dwayne Allman and Peter Green for this. Yeah, this timing's working out just about right. We have a few minutes left for lunch. Lunch. So we've got almond, almond, almond. So we got three almonds. A few more are going to be coming in in a few minutes. So um, two of my favorite. Well, uh, what's that? Oh well, I think Dino. Didn't we do that? Didn't we do Oh well? Yeah, Oh well is one of my favorite songs to play. I used to blend Oh well in. Uh, with uh, with Voodoo Child, I used to blend those two songs together, which was really went over really well. Um, great, great tune. I even like the way Lin- Lindsey Buckingham did it later on. You know, um, but I play a lot of Dwayne Almond too. So let's see here. We've got Jason's Almond one, two, three, four. Five, six. All right. So I think I'm, it's safe for me to go ahead and give that to Dwayne Allman. There. Dina said, yep, we did do that one. Tuna's a cool song. It was a cool song. Now we're coming down. We've got um, Clapton. Oh, wait. We had to do um, Pete Townsend and Gary Ryan. Yeah. Let's see. Townsend's kind of a 60s player. We're really a lot of 70s, too. Uh, we're missing a um, Clapton against Pete. Let's do this real quick. How about a Pete Townsend, Gary Rossington? The Who versus Skinnerd. Let's do a quick one there so that we, we can finish this out. Have somebody battle on Dwayne Allman to finish this out. I, was, I didn't have an even amount there. So we got a Townsend. And the Who in the seven, 70s was I saw the Who in the in the eighties. Um, Chris has got to go. Okay, Chris, thanks for hanging out, man. That was fun. So we got Townsend, 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 Townsend. Okay, Townsend. So we're gonna give that to Townsend so we can even this up. One Rossington. We got Dean. Dean's in the. Dean's got the Skinner going on there. And Townsend. Okay, so we're going to give this one a Townsend. And David's got a Pete in there. Okay, so that now uh, Clapton and Townsend. Eric Clapton, Pete Townsend. Very uh, timely. Uh, no, at the same time, their music was at the same time. Um, very different kind of players. Eric Clapton's more of a blues bass. Pete Towns is just just some cool lot of suspended chords and awesome songwriting. Uh, not so much of a, like a lead. Oh, he does play lead, but not not and Clapton is more of exploring lead guitar stuff. So we've got Clapton. We got three Claptons so far. 
see how it comes in. We got a Townsend for Jason. So we're three to one at this point. And let's see. Another Towns. Okay. So we're three to two now. We're getting close. We're getting close to this one. I'm going to back this screen off just a little bit so we can. That was a lot. Let's see here. We can see it a little bit better. Okay. Okay, so we have one, two, two Townsends, three Clapton. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it to Clapton. Um, but if if I if if uh, more come in, let me know. Okay, so now here we are. Pulling into the end here, Jeff Beck and Tony Iommi, and then Dwayne Allman and Eric Clapton. These are good. This this turned out pretty good. This turned. Let's do this. Let's do the Jeff Beck Iommi one first. Okay, we're gonna crown the king of '70s guitar players. Got a Beck. And, okay, here we go. Here we go. We got Iomi, so we're neck and neck. Jeff Beck. So one Iomi, two Becks so far. Uh, let's see. Some other Jeff Beck. There was a Jeff Beck album that I listened to for years called There and Back, which was a um, really cool album to listen to. Not one of his more... Um, known albums but if you ever wanted to listen to a great guitar album uh it's called there and back really cool so let's see we got beck iomi beck beck iomi so we got two iomis we got david and jim and then we've got dino michael i got those backwards dino michael and dean on beck so I'm going to give it to Beck now. Um, I'm sorry. One, two, three. Yeah, two Iomis, three. I'm going to give it to Beck now. Like I said, I can always come back in if more. Come on. Now this one's going to be interesting. Dwayne Allman and Eric Clapton. I don't know. For me, both very very influential in the same way. Uh, Dwayne Allman more for slide. Eric Clapton more for single notes, although they both played both. This will be interesting. Interesting what we get here for this one. Um, for me, I'm not going to influence it anyway. Let's see. So, okay, we got them coming in now. Dino's got Clapton. And Jim's got Clapton. We got two Claptons. Let's see if we get any almonds in there. You know, and this this is, there's no um, prerequisites. You can just, if that's what you like, that's what you like. You know what I mean? Uh, so we had two Claptons. Um, Dean says a tough one is a tough one. Go with Clapton. So we got three Claptons. We got an almond for David Reed. And another Clapton for Michael. So right now Clapton's taking it. Um, Jim, so we had, I think everybody. So we had Dino, Jim, Dean, David, and Michael. I think that's who we've got left playing here. So I'm going to give it to Clapton. All right. And, oh, we got two almonds. So Jason, Jason just... Okay, so we got two almonds and one, two, three, four Claptons. So I'm going to give it to Clapton for the moment here. And that's going to bring us to the finals. Jeff Beck versus Eric Clapton. 
that's t- that's even tougher than the doing all one for me. For me, I, I can I can pick out some of the riffs that I play, um, some of the licks that I play um, that were influenced by both of them equally. I've got some stuff that I that I kind of took from Clapton, and I got some stuff that I've taken from from Beck too. So let's see here. We've got um, Jason's got Clapton. Dean's got Clapton. So we got two here. We got one for Beck. Jason's got Beck. So we got two to one at this moment. Uh, and we've got J- Jason, Dean, and... Um, wait, let's see here. Okay, I'm trying. I'm losing. So let's see. David is Beck. So I get one for Beck. Dino's Clapton. So one each. Jim is Clapton. There's two for Clapton. Jason's Beck. So that's two and two. Dean was Clapton. Right. So that. So that's three and two. I'm, because of the the last one, there's some uh, Clapton. I just want to make sure that was in here. So we got. One, two, three Claptons and two Becks. Um, we got Jason. Uh, we'll wait for Michael. I think Michael's who, who we're waiting for here. David, we got Dean. Jim, we got Dino. So we're going to wait for Michael, see what Michael, Michael could tie it up or Michael could give it to Clapton. We'll see. We'll wait and see if he's, if he's still with. I think he's still with this. The number's the same of the people here. Um, by the way, while we're waiting, um, having an issue with the Facebook uh, streaming to the group, it keeps telling me it's not connected, then I connect to it. Um, so is anyone here going through the Facebook group? I see mostly everybody I see is, I think Chris was in Facebook. Let's see here. Oh, we got Cokes back. Cokes got Clapton. All right, so Clapton... Got one, two, three, four Claptons and two Becks. So I'm going to go, and Michael's Clapton too. Okay, so we got our winner. 70s guitar player. Started in the 60s when all the, still playing. Uh, but for the 70s guitar player, we've got Clapton. Awesome. But maybe next time we'll do the, do the, do the next round of these before. You can let me know if this was fun or not. I had a great time doing this. This is fun. I've got some other stuff that's going to be kind of like multiple choice trivia that you could do on your phone. Uh, if you guys who have used Kahoot before, uh, you, what happens is you have a, um, a code, and I'll put the questions up on the screen, and it'll come to your phone, and you can pick A, B, C, or D, or true or false, or whatever it is, uh, for different guitar things. Uh, I'm gonna be. I thought it would be cool for just like, guitar trivia type stuff or but actually as a learning experience for maybe like some theory stuff or like um scale stuff or you know just any any kind of you know things that would be uh fun to do so these are some other things that i'm thinking about doing having some more fun with live streaming and um this was a lot of fun hanging out with you guys uh dean says that was fun cool cool man i thought it was too it was cool hanging out with everybody and um uh, I'm going to go grab some lunch right now. Uh, but thanks, everybody, for hanging out, man. Thanks um, for everyone who, who participated. And for those who didn't, that's cool, too. Uh, but thanks for hanging out with us today. And I'm liking the, the uh, change in lights. <laughs> that's cool. So um, Jim says that was great. Awesome. Awesome. And if any of you guys uh, come up with um, ideas for this, you know, if uh, something to kind of like a rundown like this is or maybe like some multiple choice things and stuff like that let me know we can plan them ahead of time and uh this is a lot of fun and dina says thanks bye okay awesome thanks everybody um i'll see you next wednesday uh and uh, we'll do a little of the podcast and then we'll do a little of this too i think it will be fun okay everybody good to see you thanks dino and jim and dean and michael coke david um, did I say Jason? Jason and um, and Chris was here earlier. 
And uh, anyone else that was in here later, if I, if I missed you, I, I apologize. Charlie was here. And thanks to Charlie. Uh, and Mark was here. Hi, Mark. Thank you for hanging out. And I will see everybody next week. Have a great week. Okay? All right. Bye-bye.